All right, folks, what we're looking at here is a Zygu G90. This is actually my second one. Uh, I picked it up after many years of not having one of these, and I felt very sad about that. So anyhow, we've been running this through some tests and doing some videos on it. And in today's test, what we're going to do is we are going to test the spectral purity of this radio. And that means that when we transmit on this radio, is it emitting any signals or transmissions that would be in violation of FCC rules? So we're going to hook this up to a really fancy spectrum analyzer. We're going to take a look at the rules, and then we're going to test it out. Stay tuned. Elevate your electronic projects with PCBWay.com. Enjoy premium PCB manufacturing and assembly services at unbeatable prices. Benefit from fast turnaround times and reliable worldwide shipping. From initial prototypes to full-scale production, PCBWay.com is your dependable partner. Experience the exceptional value and customer satisfaction that PCBWay provides. Visit PCBWay.com today and turn your ideas into results. Okay, for this test, we're going to be using the Siglin SSA, and mine's actually a 3021. The one in this picture is a 3032, and the reason I'm showing the picture of the 3032 is because that's the only good picture that I could find. Now, the 3021 is the exact same spectrum analyzer. It just does not have the same bandwidth capabilities, but it's more than enough for this test. So what we're going to do is we're going to feed a signal into the RF input, which you can see down here on the lower right-hand side of your screen. So for the test setup, what we did is that we have our Zygu G90 right here, and then we have the RF output coming through this coaxial cable and into what I call the big-ass attenuator. The big S attenuator is a 40 dB pad, and it is good for up to 100 watts. So it's more than capable of handling the power output of the Zygu G90. After the big S attenuator, we have a smaller mini circuits. Uh, this is the VAT10 Plus, and it's a 10, B, 10 dB attenuator. So the combination of these is going to give us 50 dB of attenuation. If you string attenuators together in a configuration similar to this, you want to make sure that the one with the highest power handling capability is connected to your radio. And then that way the power is decreased and then the lower signal is reduced another 10 dB. Coaxial cable comes out and it goes right in here into our RF input. Okay, and here is the front face of the Zygu G90, which we're not going to see a whole lot of in this video. What we're going to do is we're going to use a CW key here. This is from Morse.us, I believe. It's a 3D printed CW key, and even though I can't do CW, it works just fine. This goes into the key jack on the back of the radio, and then you can see here we are tuned to 28.3 in the 10 meter band, and we are set to mode of CW. And we're going to do this to generate a carrier. Actually here, I'm actually keying up, and you can see down here that the radio output is 20.2 watts. My goal is not to bore everybody to tears, so we're not going to read all of this, but we want to take a look at this first paragraph. For transmitters installed after January 1, 2003, and that's us, the mean power of any spurious emission from a station transmitter or external RF power amplifier transmitting on, a, on or at a frequency, it says on a frequency below, 30 megahertz must be at least 43 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission. So that means if we see any spikes anywhere, they have to be 43 dB below what our fundamental is going to be at. Now, we have things called harmonics, which are multiples of your fundamental uh, transmission. A harmonic counts as a spurious emission, but not all spurious emissions are harmonics. I hope that makes sense to you. Okay, so here's the software that we're going to use to remote control the spectrum analyzer, and it is Easy Spectrum. So there's a couple of different things that we need to do is, first we want to set a reference level offset, and we're going to set ours to 50 dB because that is the sum of our two attenuators. So we've gone ahead and done that. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to adjust our span. And so I want to go to Frequency. And our start is at zero hertz, which is fine. And our first test is going to be on 60, I'm sorry, 160 meters at 1.9 megahertz. And my stop, I'm going to probably set this to something relatively low, like, I don't know, 50 megahertz. And now we're set. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to key up a carrier on 1.9. And we're going to see if there is any harmonics or spurious emissions. And you can see that that is pretty 
good. Let me go ahead and pause that. And what we're seeing is about 43 dB, which is 20 watts, which is the output power of our, um, of our test. And so that looks really clean on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play now, and then uh, we're going to adjust this to 80 meter band. And that is 3.750. So let me go ahead and key up. And again, we see about 43 dB. Let's put a marker on that. And I wonder if I can do that while it's paused. I don't think I've ever done that. Marker type normal. And I'm going to have to unpause. So give me one second. Okay, so I put a marker on the top of that peak, and you can see it's 42.56 dBm. And uh, we feel good about that because 20 watts is 43 dB. And again, this looks pretty clean, no spurious emissions that I can see. Okay, now we are set at 7.150 megahertz, which is the 40 meter band. Let's go ahead and key up. And what I did is pause that so we don't have to listen to that noise. And again, it looks like it's at the right power level and we see no spurious emissions. So I set it to 30 meters now at 10.125 megahertz. And what I want to do is I'm going to come over here. Let me hit play. And I'm going to adjust my frequency. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my scale now, my stop to 100 megahertz. And we're good there. So let's go ahead and key up on 10125. And again, it looks good. No spurious emissions or harmonics that I can see. Let's go ahead and go to 20 meters at 14175. And again, it's clean and at the appropriate power level. So it's still pretty good. Now we are going to go to uh, 15 meters at 21,225. So let's go ahead and key up. Again, it looks good. Appropriate power level, no spurious emissions or harmonics. And last, we are going to do 10 meters at uh, 28.3. Let's key up. And again, it's clean. So that's really good. <laughs> I, um, I didn't expect that to be as clean as it is, and it looks fantastic. And hats off to Zygu. I want to thank everybody for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.